as a nation, we are finally discussing issues. We are not discussing tribes, personalities, or political formations. But rather, we are discussing issues that affect each and every one of us. Issues of taxation, debt, budget, corruption, the cost of living, unemployment, and opportunities for all Kenyans, especially our young people. If you go back on my Twitter account, I made a commitment to the country in 2019, 2020, that the conversation in Kenya is going to change. It is not going to be about personalities. It is not going to be about positions. It is not going to be about tribes. It is going to be about issues. Today, that situation is true that we are having a conversation about issues in our country. We must all be proud of ourselves that we have managed to elevate the debate in our country to the level of issues that affect all of us. I am very happy that we are having a conversation about jobs for our young people, about opportunities for business, about manufacturing, about taxation, about debt, and all the other things that are important to all of us. I make this statement to highlight the actions taken in response to the overwhelming public feedback in the recent days and to fulfill my commitment to continuously and effectively listen to the people of Kenya and to underscore my intention to always take public contributions in good faith, applying them to enrich policy making, governance, and government programs. Public debt is and continues to be a major point of engagement and conversation in Kenya. I have today appointed an independent task force to carry out a comprehensive forensic audit of our public debt and report to us in the next three months. This audit will provide the people of Kenya with clarity on the extent and nature of our debt, how public resources have been expended, and will also recommend proposals for managing our public debt in a manner that is sustainable and does not burden future generations. The consequence of withdrawing the finance bill is the reduction of our revenue targets by 346 billion. Over the last few days, our treasury team has been assessing the adverse impact of either reducing the budget by 346 billion in full or borrowing the 300 and 46 billion in full. And cutting the entire amount in our assessment would significantly and drastically <clears throat> affect the delivery of critical government services while borrowing the whole amount in full will occasion a fiscal deficit by a margin 
that would have significant repercussions on many sectors, including our exchange rates and interest rates. We have since, after extensive consultations, struck a middle ground and we will be proposing to the National Assembly a budget cut of not the entire 346, but a budget cut of 177 billion and borrowing the difference. Whatever we are going to borrow the difference will increase our fiscal deficit from what I intended to be 3.3% of our GDP, it will now go up to 4.6% of GDP, still lower than last year, and will be used to fund some of our critical government services. We will use the, the money that we will borrow to protect funding for some of the critical areas that the people of Kenya have asked me to protect. They include hiring of junior secondary school teachers and medical interns, funding the milk stabilization program for our dairy farmers, reviving our stall road projects that are in many parts of Kenya, retaining the fertilizer subsidy program that has helped us manage our cost of living, settling the debt owed to farmers in our coffee sector, capitalizing the coffee cherry fund to support our farmers in that sector, enabling public owned sugar mills to pay outstanding debt to sugarcane farmers for their deliveries, additional funding for higher education, new funding model that was in our plan will now receive additional funding, settling arrears owed to counties, settling arrears for NGCDF, and settling arrears for our pensions. Accordingly, in keeping with the enhanced austerity measures we have committed to implement and align government expenditures within the budgetary implications of the withdrawal of the Finance Bill 2024, the following actions shall be taken with immediate effect towards the realization of the new budget. 47 state corporations with overlapping and duplicating functions 